Welcome to the Get In The Mix Isolation Sessions. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Novation Peak and the brand new firmware update that allows the introduction of user-created wavetables, third-party wavetables, and the most exciting bit for me, some custom wavetables created by the guys at Noisier. Now, Noisier are one of the best drum and bass artists in existence and having this custom design pack from them guys is an amazing start for any budding drum and bass producer. In the first part of today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to physically load the wavetables onto the Peak, just giving a brief overview of how that works in conjunction with the Novation component software. And in the second part, the most exciting part of today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can take those wavetables, take those sounds from the synth and turn them in to some usable basses, noisier-esque basses, shall I add, for use in drum and bass tracks. So let's dive right in. And here she is in all her beauty. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to do is download and install the Novations Components app. Now, you do have two options with the app. You can run it through a MIDI compatible browser like Google Chrome, or you can download the standalone app and run it on your Mac or Windows computer. Now, today I've downloaded the standalone app. The browser-based one works perfectly fine. Two. The first thing you're going to want to do is, of course, select your device. Now, we're today using the Peak, but the same can be said for the Summit, and everything we do today is the exact same on the Summit. But we're going to click on the Peak, choose your product, brilliant. And you can see from this little green logo in the top right-hand corner that we are connected and ready to Go. Now, once we're loaded in to the software, the first thing that we're going to see is these pre-packs of presets and sounds. Now these are constantly being updated and constantly being changed and amongst these are some absolutely fantastic sounds. So let's just quickly see how you'd send a packet of these. You can of course expand and demo the sounds. And, oh, don't want to do that yet, cancel. And you can see here we've got a real nice range of sounds. Bow Beats FM Adventure. I'm just literally going to click send to peak and then I choose a bank to send it to. I'm going to send it to bank D. Now bear in mind the only thing I need to do with the peak here is just to plug it in via a standard USB A to B cable. Now if we move over to the peak, we can now load in the patches we just loaded. If I literally click on patch, I can click on bank head to bank D and you can see here bow beat voice I can go back to my patches and I can start Oof. Oof. Oof, some fat sounds right off the go there So it's as simple as that to load patches in from the interface. Now, today's video is primarily about wavetables. So let's ignore these, these uh, banks and move straight over to the wavetable editor. Now, if I click up on here on the top right hand corner, you can see the first thing that we're greeted is once again is the noisier wavetables that I've been speaking about. The great thing about these uh, wavetables is I can click on it and we are now greeted by the wavetable GUI. Now you can see that a wavetable is created made up of five different wave shapes. Now these wave shapes interpolate or slowly change between each other to generate these kind of moving wavetable sounds. Now we can of course edit our wavetable. So this is one that's been created, generated for us by Noisier, but we can click here and I can start making changes and I can really do what I want with the pencil tool here, or I can click on this more precision based line tool where it's straight lines, or I can even use the shape generator to really just start creating some basic shapes, but then I might take the tool and kind of make some weird changes. So it's almost a square wave. It's kind of got these extra random artifacts in there change it back. We have a couple of features in here that are really useful. Now if I click on live edit and I put user wavetable one, we're now going to see, at least I hope we're going to see, let's initialize my patch. We're going to click on my wavetable button until I get to more and I'm going to scroll along to user one. And now we can see here that we've got noisier and we now have the wavetable 
generated from the noisier sound. Now, if I quickly make some changes, <coughs> you can now hear that we've, those changes that I've just made were shipped straight to the unit so that I can hear the changes that I'm making. Now, I tend to find that turning the live edit off and clicking off off a user wavetable onto another one uh, brings that over because there is a slight delay between the two, but it's a great way to manipulate and edit these sounds on the fly and kind of work out what they're gonna do. It's really easy once I've decided and settled on a wavetable to load it into the uh, synth. All I have to do is quite literally, once again, click send to peak. It asks me to select the wavetable. In this case, I'm going to select wavetable one. I'm going to send that over. And now, go to more on my oscillator. This is oscillator one, by the way. Head over to noisier. And you can see here that we've got loads and loads of different types of bass sounds, uh, overtones, rich middle sounds, flange, bell, all these different waveforms, uh, sorry, wave tables for which to start creating. Now we've looked at loading in one of the, uh, one of the custom generated wave tables. Let's look at creating our own wave table. Get a create table. I'm literally going to click on this new wave table. So I click new wave table and I can click create wave table. I'm now greeted with uh, the basic sine wave, which is the kind of classic generation for you know, what it's going to generate when you load in a new wave table. And I can start making these changes completely, as I said, with the, you know, simps, just the same as with the noisier one. We can start drawing them in with the pencil tool. I can draw lines in with the line tool, or we can use the shape tool to create some custom shapes. Then, of course, we've got down here the level. Now, these represent the level and uh, the volume level of harmonics. So if I bring this in, we can see that we're getting these different harmonics coming in at different points. Now sine waves can be thought of as harmonics. You can see that each one of these is generating a, another curve in there um, and we're able to manipulate that down. Then of course we have over here phase, which is a very similar position. It allows you to change the position or the starting point of the waveform and is great for morphing between the different types of sounds that we've got. Look at that, it's created a really nice different waveform from what we had to start. Let's create something else. So again, if I click on new wavetable, so here we can upload waveforms. So if I click on upload wavetable, we're literally generated with our explorer. I can find wavetable files that I've downloaded from the internet, downloaded from separate sources and introduce them into our wavetable editor. Again, we can then start editing the waves and load them straight onto the peak. Now these are some cool features which I'm really, really excited about. But there's one little more Easter egg that we'll just quickly cover here. You know, we've talked about the save, we've talked about sending to the peak, but here we've got a little rocket ship. Now what could the rocket ship do? So if I just click on the rocket ship. Wow, right, so now we've been given Sounds from Space, the NASA audio collection. So this little, this little um, Easter egg, if you will, has given us a bunch of sounds that that we can then use as a wavetable. So we can either use to generate a waveform based off that sound just into our current wave editor, or we can generate a wavetable and we can use that sound to create our whole wavetable, which really gives us some weird and interesting effects. And you can really start introducing some out of this world sounds to your sounds. You know, what, what could be more intuitive? No, that's not the word I'm looking for. What could be more original than sounds literally not from this planet? So this is gonna give you a really unique edge from which to come from. So hopefully you've got the basics of what you need to know from the wavetable editor there and you get how to load patches in and you get how to load your wavetables in. Now I'm just gonna quickly load a couple of these uh, as is, base trifold, base top, number seven, center peak, send to wavetable. Now, it's as simple as that. We've got our noises ready to go. So let's initialize my patch. Let's head to more. Let's head to my noises.
So we've got our wavetables, right. So let's take these wavetables, let's take these noises, and let's try and turn them into some usable bass noises for some drum and bass. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the peak, and I'm just gonna make some changes to the noise to give it a little bit more movement and a little bit more modulation. So I've got this control on my oscillator one called shape and amount. And you can see that, that changes the sound a little bit. So if I pop a modulating envelope on there, give it a fast attack, a little bit of decay, a bit of sustain. I'm gonna use an LFO I think maybe. So LFO one, that's up here. Right. So all I've done there, moved the shape up a little bit and applied an NFO to give us a little bit of movement inside our wavetable. Now let's add another oscillator in. Let's just turn that down so we can just hear that. Got a bit of LFO. Now we've got a little bit more movement and two wavetables there layered up on top of each other. Now let's add some glide and let's head to our voice settings to make sure that we've got this set to mono. Now what does mono mean? Mono means that as I play one note, it's never going to play two notes at once. I'm not going to be able to play chords because it's always going to do one note. Glide is the time that it takes to change to a note, so I'm going to crank some distortion on there. Right, well that for me gives me the fundamental of a bass that we can work with. So now let's record that straight into Ableton. I'm going to simply head over to set my interfaces, my preferences and inputs. I'm going to select here input one. I'm going to not hear it as we come. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the direct monitor on so that I can hear it as I record in. So we've got our bass inside of Ableton Audio Effects. So the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm just going to whack a utility on so I can turn it up a bit. Because although I'm turning it down here, minus 16, that is for mixing purposes. We're going to give it a boost. Happy days. Right, now I'm going to bang a saturator on there. Saturator is adding harmonics and distortion, and distortion is a huge part of any drum and bass in particular, but also in a lot of bass design. It's a big part of it. Thinoid fold. Already added a, a hell of a lot to that. Get the EQ8 out. Roll off the bottom end. Top end. A little boost. that do. Actually put another EQ on it. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to mid and side. With a, with a bass, you know, I want the low end to be mono, but I want the top end to have a little bit of stereo movement to it. So introduce a low end cutoff for the sides. For the mids, I'm just going to give low end a little boost. So when we're getting there, we're getting there. What should I put on now? It's going to be another saturator because saturation on top of saturation on top of saturation is never a bad thing. Let's go digital clip this time. Oh, it's already sounding crunchy as anything. Let's bang another saturator on there, mate. Saturate, saturate, saturate. Let's turn that down a bit. Let's use the frequency shifter, not the flange. Nobody wants a flange, I'm gonna put the frequency shifter. And we've got this fine tool. As you can see, there's some weird little stuff. Now, if I automate that fine, and um, we can maybe get some little interesting sounds out of it. Increase this to just one. There you have it. I mean, that is an interesting enough bass to start processing around and doing some weird and wonderful things with, you know, and then you can start chopping it up and cutting it up. You know, over here, I've got a little bit of a call and response section that happens. start chopping this up and doing some weird and wonderful things to it. And as you saw from that, we were able to take the wavetables generated from Noisia, import them into Ableton, process them and manipulate them into creating some crazy raw 
bass sounds, rough and ready for some drum and bass. Now, of course, we didn't go too far into detail about the processing side of things, some basic processing, some basic overviews. There is a lot more to learn. So be sure to check some other tutorials online that will take that design to the next step. But you get from there a real nice, foundation from which to work on. So as always, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, chuck us a comment in the comment section and be sure to subscribe and make sure to get in the mix.